hope you will begin our meeting. Everybody's did everybody uh before you do that, I'm going to go over the announcement of any person who make uh, make a video or audio recording in the open session of our meeting and they transmit the meeting through any media subject to reasonable requirements of the chair as the number, placement, and operation of equipment used is not to interfere with the conduct of the meeting. Any person intending to make such recordings shall notify the chair forthwith. All documents with reference are used during the meeting have to be submitted to, in duplicate to the chair pursuant to the open meeting public records law. All documents shall become part of the official recording of the meeting. So, now we can call the meeting to order. And I just want to ask that everybody read the uh, minutes from the last meeting and all the other papers that came with it. I don't know if anybody noticed, but there is a whole list of uh, council members, all the members, but our new poll numbers, it's in the booklet. It's inside someplace there. Before the budget numbers are called, it's in that page inside there. Those of you who don't know, Kathy's on vacation, otherwise you'll be presenting them. And also, just so you know, um, we work collaboratively on the documents, so Kathy submits a pretty thorough draft of the minutes. Then what we do is we actually watch the YouTube video and pick up any of the pieces that we might have missed um, to make sure that they all correspond to our agenda. Um, and then we submit them to you for final review. So uh, similarly, we do some work, and we'll talk about that in the Treasurer's Report with, um, with Terry. We also put a link in on the minutes to the YouTube video so folks can verify the validity and um, accuracy of the minutes uh, by looking right at the paper and going to that link. So we put that straight on right away before we submit the minutes uh, for review. I just thought you might like to know that, that it just doesn't, uh, you know, we're really trying to be very thorough and, um, and transparent in all of our, um, in all of our affairs. Okay, do we have, uh, let's see, has it, did everybody looked over the minutes? Or anybody have any questions on the minutes? Okay, can I have entertain a motion to accept the minutes? Can anybody do a motion for a second? No. It does. And um, just uh, I think in order of business, we we um, noticed that, that we only have six members now of the council that have been appointed. There are three voting members present. Um, but to be sure, just to cover our basis, I think uh, I would recommend we hold off accepting the minutes until March when we absolutely without question have a quorum. Okay. Would that, you know, would, would people that's agree up. with that? That's not much better. Um, but certainly we can entertain discussion if anybody has any issues with the minutes and then we can make those adjustments and present another uh, draft for approval in March if there's any issues that that would be a problem. Cool. Okay. So we go now to the treasurer's report. You're not as loud as I am, as uh, you know, boisterous, so okay. we appreciate that. Okay. I sat with him, and you all have a copy of it here. Everything looks in very good order. The operating account has a balance of 73, 84607. And the gift, we got a gift of $1,000. Um, and the balance in the gift fund is $50,835.43. The revolving fund has had some money coming in, coming out, and you have a list of all of those in your, um, uh, in your packet. And at the moment, the revolving fund has a balance of $33,692.98, and the state grant is, is in condition two. At the moment, we only have a balance of 8058.22, but we are waiting for the 49.464 to come from the state. And in the meantime, the city has a deficit spend because they know that grant is coming in. If anybody has any questions on any of these items, um, we're here to answer, okay? Everything looks in good order. It's 
it's nice having a treasure who understands the Munich system. So as we're going through, you know, we, we did, I don't know, I reconciled it five ways to Monday to make sure they all fit and, yes, and Terry yes. was watching it. So yes, yeah. yes. And the nice thing about, you know, having Mike on board is we have the figures, we have the figures as of March 1st. Whereas before Mike, when I had to go to the city auditor, we wouldn't get the March figures of April 1st. So we're way ahead. So everything was good. Everything was good. Uh, they said, they anything. I want to let the group know you may see some adjustments or shifts, uh, particularly between the revolving fund and the state fund. Um, what we do just for ease, um, until the grant is signed, we kind of front load the revolving fund with expenses, then reallocate them when the state grant is approved. So we've spent about 17000 in the state grant already, but some of the expenses you've seen in the revolving fund of that 8000 some of those will be reallocated to the state grant um, now that the grant has been approved. So that's likely to go up, and the expenses in revolving will likely go down. There are some important notes um, that I'll make just, uh, and, I'll, and I'll bring them out again. Um, our state grant, we have a significant amount of money that's allocated towards an outreach coordinator that we had for about a quarter of the year. Um, but now we've been running about five months without that person. So all of those uh, expenses haven't been incurred. We are hoping to get that outreach person on. We're, we're pulling uh, resumes now and setting up interviews now. Um, we're hoping that person will be on board by uh, April 1st. And uh, more importantly, or as importantly, we also are looking to fill a temporary admin position, very temporary, and be able to use some of that money that was allocated for uh, salary expenses for that temporary person to do some, some you know, very specific projects. That's, that's pretty much it. That's nothing else, really. Oh, and, and one last thing on the operating account. We will likely have to do a small supplemental budget we don't normally do the supplemental or ask for more money in our budget till the very end of the year when we see exactly where we are and can project uh, efficiently. But we know because of changes in one of our positions, we've changed not only their title, but the amount that they make per week. That has substantially hit our salaries account. So we know we're gonna have a deficit there. We also already have a deficit in our overtime account. Uh, mostly, well not mostly, all related to snow removal, um, so that's going to be another um, another hit. But that'll be small dollars, the salaries will be a large dollar of times. Mike, uh, the, uh, what was I going to say? Have you heard word from the state about the state grant? Yep, yeah, we've, uh, we have received it, and so the neat thing about that is, um, and I, I did explain it before, but I'll explain it again just so you know. This year's grant was predicated on 2010 census uh, data. So um, up until now, it's been an al allocation of per capita of $10 per senior for the communities based on that 2010 census. This year, we are still using the 2010 census because the data hasn't come out yet. So they have given us an award of 49000 based on the, the $10 per capita at the 2010 census numbers. But the state approved the $12. Um, they, improved, they approved the $2 increase in the per capita. So our minimum grant is 49000 but we will get a supplemental budget in um, this year to, to account for that extra $2 increase. If I do the math right, it's going to be about 9000 bucks. So, um, but we're still waiting to see on that. But we did get the grant. It's been signed by the mayor. It was sent to the state. It's been executed. So we are good to go. Is, is that just the seniors that are in the, sem in, in the senior center, or is that all the seniors in the city? Community-wide. Yeah, not just those who come to the center for services. Oh. Which is part of the reason I, and again, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more in the director's report, but it's part of the reason I'm really suggesting strongly we do some more outreach and look at programming that happens outside of the center to help some of those seniors that, uh, that don't use the center regularly. One good program is the tax aid program. 
You know, we, we do 80 people, 75 people in tax aid. Many of them don't have any affiliation with the center. But it affords us the opportunity to provide that service in the community. So it's a good, uh, you know, it's a good use of our money for seniors who don't walk through the door. On the, um, the revolving fund, the St. Patrick's agenda, the income that you got, that's for, uh, if I can read this right, you basically took in revenues of over, a little over $1,000 for St. Pat's dinner. That's, that's our company, isn't it? So, so you're not reading it right, but you're close. Um, okay. So we have, um, we have about 75 people who are signed up, and that's going to be, if you do the math, $10, about 750 in revenue. Yeah. However, our expenses are $12 a plate for the food, then we have the desserts and the beverages, which will probably be another two or three hundred dollars. So we'll be about six hundred bucks to the negative on that's that event. That's why I asked. Yep. But and we, we're not really sure right now until we have all the final accounting, which I will give you a final accounting for when we're done. Right. Um, but we have always done that. We've always subsidized at some level all of our meals. So. Um, and then the other kind of interesting, we're going to do a plated service. We are having that plated, so we had to buy the paper goods and stuff like that. But also use takeout containers for folks that either want to take the rest of their meal home or um, only do a takeout. So um, that's another additional cost that isn't necessarily yet been absorbed, but we will, we will be breaking that down more. And what's the succession from Garda Rehab? It was just a donation for whatever we whatever we want, services or programs. Yep, they just said um, they've been very generous, uh, both of their time and resources, including money. So if you know, um, if you remember, that Scatter Rehab donated the emergency bag, the first aid bag to us. Um, they've also been here. They do a lot of programming with us uh, and for us. And then they gave us the cash contribution for, for senior center programming. That video is. Oh, good. Give yep. It, give it a Thank yeah. God. Yes. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? All right, then we'll go to uh, old business. And uh, let's see. I see that we had a COVID clinic this past week. How did we make up on that? Well, it's all relative. Um, so the CHC is tasked with going out in the community and doing uh, medical, dental, those kinds of things in the community, not just being a brick and mortar location. So it's, you know, they're thrilled to be able to come here. The facility was awesome. We only had 14 people. Um, that they come in for vaccines. Which is interesting, I think I brought up the stats last month about the numbers of people that were eligible, but the reality is, um, the reality is that people aren't COVID concerned as they were a year ago. Um, six months ago, giving out test kits, we had lines out to West Broadway when we did it at uh, PACC. Now, we have cases of test kits here Nobody's asking, there aren't any inquiries. CHC has test kits, CHC has test kits, and there are just a lot of test kits available through retail establishments. So, that being said, I want to remind folks that we do have test kits, we make them readily available, we have eliminated all of our, um, of our uh, you know, prerequisites, and I'm going to ask you today to just kind of formally do that that uh, we don't really have to be super discretionary about giving them out because we have plenty. Um, and the other thing I'd like to ask is about the COVID policy. So, you know, I'd like to do that either now or under new business, whichever. Well, it's old business, so we can do it now. Um, the first thing is to eliminate or, um, or expire our policy as it relates to the COVID vaccine kits. I just ask for, you know, your kind of nod on that. We'll get a formal vote in March, but as long as nobody has any issues, then we'll be a little bit more um, free to give those out. Anybody have any issues with us doing that? No. Um, even in, even though we don't, I'm not sure we have a quorum, and, you know, there's no time to ask, but 
Um, even though there is some question about whether or not we have enough voting members here, um, and we're right at 50%, I would like to ask you to also consider, as part of the COVID update, eliminating the mandatory mask policy. Now, I set that in place, and then the board approved it or um, ratified that, uh, but the fact is that most places now are going mask-free. I am still a little, uh, um, you know, concerned about doing that. So what I'd like to do is a mask not required, but requested, or, um, you know, if you need to, want to, they're welcome, but uh, eliminate the mask requirement. And if you agree to that, then I will post signage that says, mask requested, not required. Um, that way, if people want to unmask, then they can do that, but they do so at their own, um, you know, peril or using their own judgment. Well, for instance, you know, they have signs that say mass uh, recommended but not required. Yep. And all, the all the public buildings you don't have to. Yeah. They just, yeah, last Thursday yeah. they eliminated the requirement in public buildings. Um, you know, we're a little different, the schools are a little different, uh, and public access uh, places that are not government are a little different. So we've kind of always, as have other centers, kind of developed our own policy to use the building. And it specifically allows for that in our charters, that the, that the Clamps Foundation can set its own policies for the building. So um, if that's okay with you, I'm going to, I mean, that was my recommendation, is to go recommended, not required. Um, what, does, what does the Board of Health really recommend city-wide on the Board of Health? Are there <coughs> suggestions at all, or are they just leading it up to all of us? Um, well, the Board of Health made the recommendation to City Hall to go maskless. Um, they've been a little bit more cautious with us as we've talked to and asked for guidance from the Board of Health, from CHC, and from the hospital. Healthcare facilities, we've kind of operated under their level of um, caution, but they, they're they a magnet for folks that are not feeling well, right? So, there's a higher degree of exposure at a hospital than maybe here. My concern always is that even though we're not, we're not a facility that kind of caters to sick people, somebody who does have COVID could come in, which is why I really want to do the, rest, the mask recommended, not required, and make sure that's posted. So we'll get the city to make signs. I think the other thing that does, and it's really important for us to understand and embrace, is there are some folks that definitely have mask fatigue. They're done. They want to be maskless. But there are a lot of folks that still want to wear masks. Um, and I don't want to make it uncomfortable for either one. So for those that don't want to wear masks, they can come in and not wear masks. For those that do, then we're going to ask you know, that folks that don't respect that, embrace that. Don't give them a hard time. Don't give them a hard time. You know. And if we really try to be good about that, um, you know, we were a little... We were a little tight with the mask only policy, so, but we provide a lot of options. We let folks be in our facility without masks, just so you know that we do allow that. As long as they can be 10 feet away from somebody and socially distance, which is really hard to do in yoga. And it's more hard to do when you're playing bridge. So, um, you know, the card games really, you know, we said if you want to socially distance, you can, but how do you, how do you throw a, a card effectively 10 feet away? So. Um, there was no real, you know, effectively there was no, uh, you know, massless ability or social distancing ability in some of those places. So, um, all right, that's, that's my... my I, have a, I have a question. With this new, um, you know, recommended but not required, will you add that, that you should be 10 feet apart from someone, or that would just be up to... That would be up to them, okay. yeah, yeah. One thing I want to ask is, uh, can we add on to that a little bit, like people who have uh, immunosuppression problems or people maybe having a cold or flu? Yeah, I think we're still going to ask um, some kind of health questionnaire, like if you're not feeling well, please come come to the center. Um, yeah, I think that's really important. Because you're thinking of people with some kind of illness or whatever, cancer, having had cancer, or having had chemo or whatever, the immune system is weak, so I think they should be able to wear a mask and not have other people give them a hard time. Oh, totally, yeah. Again, we want to go with mask recommended. So that would suggest to people, hey, 
We'd still like you to wear a mask, but we won't, we won't force it as we have in the past. So, and we'll still make masks readily available. I just got another stockpile. I asked for another stockpile in anticipation of this. Every day we have folks that ask for masks, some because they forgot, some, it, it, it's really interesting. And let's, let's be real. They come, folks come here and they participate here and they have masks and they're very diligent. And they walk to the parking lot and they take the mask off and they go to Walmart. Or they go, you know, right. wherever they go, right? So in every place other than the senior center, they're not wearing masks. Now I, I think at least wearing a mask here affords us a little bit of, um, a, a little bit of the ability to help control the spread of the virus. But the reality is if somebody comes here um, and they're in this press, they're going into a lot of other places where they're seeing folks face to face without masks. So, um, which I think is dangerous. I think over time that's going to come back to bite us in the butt. But right now, they're saying we don't need to wear masks, so um, we'll follow their direction. I don't expect to see any changes much until the fall again. And here's Hunter. Yeah. Uh, the of the building again at Nico. Numbers start going up again. Yeah, just a, a little a side comment on that. We've done really well. I mean, we've done really well. We were fully open for programs and services for almost a year, for over a year before we had our first shutdown, and we shut down for two days. So that's pretty pretty good. We've had no. We do you know very rigorous contact tracing. We've had no secondary exposures because of participation here. So thankfully, God has been on our side, um, and we've had no no real bad implications as a result of that. Alright, so if that's okay, can we take our mask off? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those one, yep. Yeah. Well, we're 10 feet high, so we're up. Yeah, we could get closer if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the little kid's table. <laughs> it's a common sense thing. I mean, if I go to Walmart, I still wear a mask because you don't know. Well, that's Whether good. somebody's got something of a price shop or any other places where you're close to someone. And we're doing some improvements here to make it safer even without masks. We're going to talk a little bit about that in my, in my uh, report. Okay. Do we want to talk about the next topic? Yeah. yeah, let's talk about it. We don't have the ability to vote today, which is too bad because we had um, planned on it. But uh, we do have a board vacancy. Uh, Ron, you want to go back? Can I just get three elections? I knew the Yeah, so, so officially, I'm, a, I'm the CEO of the, the Council on Aging. Um, so I'm the Senior Center Director and the CEO of this board. But I don't find anywhere where it gives the CEO a voting, um, the voting right, any ability to vote. And I think that's, that's why they set up a seven member, it's okay. two or four for tiebreakers. Right. It'll always be four to three at the, at the very least, right? Yeah, that would be yeah, there's no place, uh, and I don't want to, um, you know, to assume that that's true. So we'll, we'll assume it, it's not. Um, I don't think there's anything that really has to be voted on today, other than kind of the acknowledgement of the policy, which I was the one who initiated with your um, ratification, so I can uninitiate and we can have a full, um, you know, vote on it in March. But with the vast majority of you, you know, I mean April, it is March. It is March. Yeah, with the majority of you saying it's a good idea or it's fine, then then I, I feel like it's somebody. So yeah. for yoga tomorrow, no it's, yeah. yeah, no mask. Unless you want to wear Yep, yep. Yeah, and I typically will um, visit with all the classes. I try to get into every class every day, just do a welcome, say hello, and give updates. So we'll start doing the updates tomorrow. Very good. And uh, I had brought up about Trade Resource Center. Have we heard anything? Anybody got uh, Oh, you know, let's just do the, the board vacancy for a minute if we can. Um, so there's still a vacancy on the board. We're looking to fill uh, a person in that position. Uh, both Ken and Paul had expressed interest. Um, in addition to them expressing interest, so that would fill one of those positions, uh, Pat Jandris submitted her resignation this weekend. Those of you who don't know, Pat's been kind of struggling a little bit with some uh, medical issues. And I think AARP is in flux. So we're looking at, um, you know, I'm, I'm actually a little thankful that we're not in a position to accept her uh, resignation. We can wait a month. That will afford us the opportunity to look at, um, you know, who we put in. And, and obviously now we have two people who are interested. We can fill both those positions. Um, yeah. 
I, have, I wasn't finished. So Terry was going to remind me, because she's exactly right, that the bylaws specifically say two of the seven seats will be reserved for one for Golden Age, one for AARP. But if AARP is in flux, um, and one of the things we've noticed is that the AARP and Golden Age rep kind of serve, um, you know, each year and it's been the same faces. There's really no reason to not create an opportunity for those people who have dedicated so much time, effort, energy, and resources to our board to serve a three-year term. So, you know, we're not asking for anything now. There's no plan on the table. There's no agenda here. But maybe we can, as a group, start looking at there are some other things in the bylaws that have to be changed. They're old and outdated and have to be updated. Maybe one of those changes is removing the the seated designee of AARP and the seated designee of Golden Age, take them off the board and afford them the ability to serve for three years, as opposed to one year based on the um, you know, whim of the president of either of those organizations. It would give us a little bit more consistency and stability as a, as a board, um, and allow us to open up a little bit more um, you know what's happening, but but understand that's that's wicked preliminary. There's no plans. We haven't really had any discussions, but it's time to at least look at it. So let's take that opportunity to see: is, is this the right thing to do? Is it not the right thing to do? Um, what's going to happen you know, with those organizations moving forward? So, do the board members have to be approved by the mayor? All board members are approved by the mayor. Yeah, yes. even the AARP and Golden Age, as representatives, they're designated by their respective organizations, but the appointment to the board is still made, made by the mayor, which also gives some ability for them to manage it. So they're not doing a yearly appointment, they can do an appointment for three years of whoever that, that person is. And that wouldn't necessarily mean they're not representing AARP and Golden Age, because there are several people here who participate, so they would still have a voice at the table. Some, know? New, some new folks know what Golden Age is. Yeah, yeah. Gloria's the president. No, I know. I know Gloria is, but well, I'm the secretary. Yes, I know. <laughs> I but guess I'm, I'm just thinking it. about Mary and Nancy. Are you familiar with it? Yes. I, yes. Oh, does everyone know? I thought you said, does anyone know? No. Does everyone know? Sorry, I just put my mask on so you can understand. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Paul. That was me. She's a loyal. There's no reason that the Golden Age or the AARP could just come in at a meeting if they have something important to tell us or... Always. Yes, yeah. they don't have to necessarily be a board member. We, we publicize our meetings. Um, in my notes, you know, I've, I've put a paragraph, anybody's welcome to come and attend. We're looking for associate members so we can add people on at, at any time. Um, I totally embrace that idea, Ken. And for folks that are, are you know, watching now or listening, I, I would really encourage it. Absolutely. But in order to do anything like that, the bylaws would have to be changed. Would have to be amended. Yeah, yeah. And the amendment is made by the board, by the Council on Aging Board. Yeah. So the Council on Aging is seven people. So they would decide that. And, and I think we need to wait and see Yep. Going, you know? yep, yep, I think I made that just, again, that was part of my um, my suggestion that we start looking at it now and have the discussions with the AARP and Golden Age. I think there's an opportunity to bring those folks, you know, together, um, maybe, but we don't know. We don't know until we know. We don't know until, yeah. They're a little high. They don't know what they're missing. They're a little high for <laughs> well, like, I, I, like when Mike and I were talking, we were mentioning earlier, you know, this is, uh, is there any other ARP board around here? And as far as I know, the only one is up near the North Shore of Boston. So there's uh, only two left, I believe, in Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, AARP Federal, I mean, I, you know, I belong to that, but I don't belong to the uh, local. local. Well, you yeah. get something in the mail every single other day yeah. <laughs> from AARP. Um, I, I would hate to 
and, and I'm not suggesting, I don't want anybody to infer that AARP is on the brink of, of closing. I'm not suggesting that. But um, I think they provide a service, and I would hate to see that service eliminated. They provide an avenue for people to be engaged who may not otherwise be engaged, and I would hate to lose that avenue, just as I would with Golden Age, or I would our caregiver support group or that that cafe. Everything we do affords somebody an opportunity to come in and get services and get connected. So, um, you know, our goal ultimately is to make sure we continue that that um, that focus and perspective is just keeping people involved, engaged, and doing what's best for our seniors. Make sure we let people know when there's an AARP meeting or Golden Age meeting, so that you know. Well, I've been asking Gloria to do that. I've been asking her if she would just give me a monthly. Oh, she has. Yeah. Yeah. We, she does a really good job. Terry does a great yes, job. She is. Yep. Read the senior review, folks. And AARP, the reason there hasn't been a general meeting on a monthly basis is because we're waiting for the words from uh, okay. National. Yeah, National has prevented that. With which, COVID, they've been holding on to everything. Yeah, that's, that's hurt the organization substantially. Yeah. somebody gets sick, they're sick for a while. So we're a little bit lenient on that. Okay. Um, so uh, you know, we really, we really should remind people that they should be coming on a, um, on a consistent basis, but how do you do that when you're still working for three months or things like that? So we get that a little bit. The associate members, I want to just reiterate, because I've said it before, it gives us an opportunity to get people engaged at a different level on the board. To be part of discussions, to be you know getting updates, to help spread the word, to help us identify and evolve programs and services. So we really want to encourage people to be associate members. Um, from from Ron's perspective, he doesn't see a distinction, or he doesn't care to to look at a distinction except when it comes to a vote in terms of what what board members do and what they're privileged to and stuff like that. Still the citizen associate. Yeah. Yeah, Ron, Ron is? Yeah. On that list that no, I said? Yes. Uh, I didn't know it. Yes, I'm looking at it. I'm a slacker. <laughs> I feel a kinship. Um, what do you guys know? <laughs> Ron is not an associate. He's a chair. Jeez, that's funny. Yeah. Um, you can make that note on your list. Nobody else sees that list but you. Oh I'll update it for the purpose of um, the minutes that we, we post. Well, it's good for us to talk to somebody or whatever, get an email address and we can post them. That's my office for them. So, yeah, it works. It, um, as I always said in the past, too, um, I think you associates should come and support every activity that goes on here. We do. We, yeah, we do. We do. But Ron and I are sat here and counted, and they're one, two, three sometimes. A four, one, but you no, know, that's part of your job too, is to support what's going on. Yeah. And that's what you how you know. I know, I look around this this is a pretty good um, they don't come to everything but each person has their niche. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a good thing. And I think that, that your point is so well taken. You you, you know I've I've supported that. Um, but that's not bad either, is to spread the wealth, to always have a representative, but it doesn't have to be all representatives. But yeah, try to be at uh, events and functions. And as many of you know, when I go to those functions and I see you, I try to introduce you to afford people the opportunity when I leave to get you here. So it's a blessing and a curse. Especially with my name Yeah. So, um, so that Ron is is something that came from you, and it was um, it was simply a matter of 
you know, creating a resource for folks that are looking to have work done, whether it's landscaping or asphalting or roofing, um, create that resource. It's really important to note that if we do that, we're not giving a referral, um, but providing the resource. So Rob, I have Rob Tax with, um, with getting a business card, a multi-slot business card holder, like 48 as opposed to the three that we normally have. Um, so we can build that resource center downstairs and start collecting that information. Okay. Another good reason to have something like that is like a lot of our elderly to not uh, go out and mow their lawns anymore. Right. So at least if they had somebody who would like to do it part time or whatever, that somebody could call and can come and mow my lawn and maybe have it on a bi weekly basis and stuff like that. So yep. good to find out if we have people like that. We have a list. Keep working on it. We also contacted Monty Tack, Building mm -hmm. Inspector, Health Department, to start getting us resources. They have lists that they use too, specifically for some specific functions, but they're very, they're very targeted. So, like the Board of Health has a list of everyone who's um, certified, you know, serve safe. You know, I don't know how helpful that would be to somebody who's having a confirmation of baptism, or, right? I, uh, I have, uh, we have a private group for Sapphire Park, and I can put the word out there and express the residents who they use for snow plowing, for lawn, for um, oil and electric and plumbing, oh, things like trades. that. Yeah. I can carpenter, mm -hmm. you know, do handyman work. But I can see what they're, from the residents themselves, who they recommend. Because, um, I'm looking for a new uh, snow guy because my guy just is through the roof as far as the cost goes. It's going to get worse with the price of gas. <laughs> yeah, he needs to develop for some. So. Yeah. So, do we want to talk about the listing session? I mean, we want to do that pretty soon? Or? Um, so, yeah, we should have the listing session as old business. We've reached out to um, the senior housing facilities in town, the, you know, the designated senior housing facilities that have a location building. None of them are at the point where they're opened up yet to the public. So they're not uh, doing yeah. any kind of public, um, outside public events. They do some inside public events, uh, public group events, but they're, they're not bringing outside vendors in yet. My feeling is they will be soon. So um, Deb and Sandy have been you know, uber responsive to us. They are uh, very interested in doing these sessions. But All House just hired an outreach coordinator activities coordinator and they are eager to get that person involved in these listening sessions with us so that's kind of exciting so I, I think it's going to be short term but nobody will book us now um, so okay so wait and see yep and do have to sum up at Sapphire Park last year we had a uh, and what was warm weather it was like May I think or April um, Mayor uh, Mayor Nicholson and um, a couple of the other Council people at a meet and greet when one of the residents' driveway. We certainly could do that up at Sapphire Park as well. So there are a lot of people up at Sapphire Park sure. who don't come down here. And I want to know why. Yeah, my feeling is when and if we open um, the Blanchard Street as a community uh, right. listening session location, we'll send invites to or drop invites off at Sapphire Park. Good. Okay. Put a posting up, something along those lines. Now, whether they come or not is up to them, obviously. Yep. But uh, the meet and greet in the driveway was convenient for them because they can say, oh, I can just walk over. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Quick in and out, shake hands. Yeah, we'll shake hands. Yeah. 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 And they see that we have got three heads. And if they're actually going the people who go there, they might consider coming. I don't know how many seniors, maybe once were plumbers or electricians that don't do it anymore, but they might know someone in this in this circle. In, uh, who might want to help, you know, when we need somebody here. So maybe we could ask at some of these things, do you know someone who's an electrician or a plumber or a plow person or something? That's why I brought it up last meeting last month, figuring that if you have any ideas, no people or whatever, so we'll keep it open. Yeah, ask your favorite plumber, your favorite electrician, your portable person um, to come drop off cards here and, or as importantly, ask them who they would refer. So, you know, there's an interest, this is a conversation for an entirely different time, but there's a group called SCORE, which is the Service Corps of Retired Executives, 
And they have in, a, a function to help in the administration and operation of business. They give um, advice on marketing plans and outreach plans and stuff like that. I don't see why we couldn't do, or shouldn't develop a kind of secondary score um, thing, and that's what Ron is, is talking about for tradespeople. So that's, that's our hope, is to be able to build a robust uh, number of people we can refer to, and then by virtue of those referrals, get other people's recommendations. How did they work out? Were they good? Were they reliable? Did they good, have good craftsmanship? That kind of stuff. Uh, we go over to the new business. Business director's report. All right, I can get my breath. <laughs> so uh, in February, as you all know, we had a we we really lost three days of programming. Here. Two days we were closed specifically, and one day we were open, but uh, it was probably colder in the building than it was outside. I mean, it was cold. Our boiler uh, went down sometime over the weekend. We got here. And we were working in about 49 degree, um, you know, weather inside the building, with the hope and expectation that it was going to be resolved quickly, like hit the reset button and magically we'd have heat. Um, but eight hours later, working that whole day with technicians here, they couldn't resolve it. So that's when we decided to close for two days, which I'm glad we did because for two days we didn't have heat. Two more days, and it would have been, um, you know, crazy. It was a substantial cost for that. It was about a little under $3,600 for the first visit. And then we have for two more days after that. We haven't gotten those bills. Um, it's going to be a costly uh, item for us in our, uh, in our budget. Was there a big problem with the boiler? So about, as I understand it, and I may be wrong, so don't quote me, although I'm on film. Um, several years ago, the entire city went with a computerized system of managing the boilers. Uh, that system has failed on us at least three times. The motherboard has just burned out. So um, we called the company to ask them to come and troubleshoot it, right? And they said, that's fine. And they gave us an hourly cost, which was, was very high. Um, but, you know, that's, you, you have to pay, right? They're the only game in town. Well, they're not in town. They're in New Jersey. And they start charging you from the day at the time the technician gets in the truck and drives up through the Sawmill Parkway, New York Express, into, you know, Connecticut. So we, and I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay someone for, you know, 14 hours of drive time because you don't have a local tech. So we uh, brought our local technicians in who have always been very good to us. Rayborn Electric and uh, Royal Steam to look at you know how do we disassemble that that computerized system from our boilers and go to a manual thermostat. So we've got all the thermostats; they're being put in now. The system's been bypassed. Um, the cost of heat, and I'm not sure if it's a result of that or just you know, we anticipated an increase. The increase has been substantial. Uh, in heating the building, which is another uh, place on our budget we may need to get a supplemental for, but we'll wait again, wait and see what May brings and where we're at. Um, but pretty, pretty significant. Um, computer, just so that you know, from a from a resources uh, perspective, we had two PCs downstairs. They were pretty old. They were operating Windows Seven and Windows Eight, um, so they're, they're very old. The city came in our uh, tech. Guys, our IT guys looked at it and kind of um, had a nervous breakdown because they were so old and like, no, that's not acceptable. So they immediately built us two new computers, loaded them with RAM, they're up to date. Um, so we have state-of-the-art computer technology downstairs in the library, two workstations. Um, all of the PCs in the office, all of our operating PCs have been given huge upgrades as well. So we're upgrading new operating system, new office products. All of them we've added substantial RAM to. They whiz, they're wicked fast now, which for us is good, right? So you're not waiting 20 minutes to load, log into my senior center and get information from someone who's standing at the window. They're very fast, they're very efficient, we're so appreciative of that. Um, the city also let us know that there were some financial resources available, not necessarily in cash, but in, in vendor um, credits, and uh, sent that out to all departments and asked for um, things that would certainly comply with COVID um, and our COVID policies and stuff. So um, as you know, for the last three events, we've had to borrow food warmers. 
like when we did Christmas, we had 26 hard plastic cases to keep the food warm, which you're required to do by law. They have to say, heat the food has to stay at 140 plus, um, you know, something like in cold, you know, 40 degrees or less. So they need to be insulated. Um, it's been a little bit of a logistical problem for us. We asked to get some, um, you know, some plastic ones, some inexpensive ones, and the city said, if you need a food warmer, we'll get you one. So they bought us a food warmer at a cost of about $7,000. So we can do all of our programs now catered and do them safely and in compliance with health and safety uh, laws. That'll be particularly good not only for the senior center, but for the CAC that is looking to expand their community food program as well. Um, we purchased, it for other events, we, we hijack um, ice machines all over the city. So we'll go to the high school, load up four coolers, we'll go to the middle school, load up coolers. We'll go to the, um, there's a certain social club that has a French uh, name to it that's very popular. We hit their ice machine as well. We won't talk about which one it is, a Canadian club, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, you know, talk about that, the city's getting us a small ice machine, so we'll be able to produce our own product here. Um, you know, the mayor and the welfare committee have been very responsive to us. They um, approved a purchase of air purifiers. So we'll have uh, four air purifiers in this room. We'll have an air purifier in the main office, two air purifiers, oh, two in this room, two in the dining room, one in the pool room, and um, one in the conference, a small tabletop in the conference room. Uh, the cost of those air purifiers? Yeah. Nineteen thousand dollars. That the city, um, recognizing the fact that we've been open the whole time, struggling with masking, want to keep it safe, and want to stay open, and, and recognizing that we're probably going to go maskless, said, "All right, what's what can we do to?" keep it a little safer, right? Make it a little bit uh, better for our seniors. So they've approved that for, for about 19 grand. In addition, um, the, uh, the mayor and the welfare committee, um, you know, the mayor and, and his power net talked to us, what are some of our other needs? We're doing a program here next week. We don't have enough, we don't have enough chairs and tables. And I said, well, how many chairs do you need? Um, so we told them, and uh, we're getting 60 new folding chairs and two new uh, folding chair racks for the senior center. So um, that's that's a cost of about twenty five hundred bucks. So just doing the math right there, we're, we're talking about thirty thousand dollars again of improvements, um, you know, product things like that that are portable, so we can use them on whatever floor we need. Um, that just by asking, you know, the mayor gave. Now some of the things we haven't heard is we put in a request for a fifty thousand dollar foot vent in the kitchen. Um, my feeling is it's probably going to be a couple years before we see a new hood vent downstairs. Um, we'd like to put some more ovens, electric ovens in, and really need to vent that. Um, so that may be a little bit of a longer term proposition. The ramp outside, the metal ramp, it's still you know good and solid, but before it becomes a problem, I'd like to get some repairs done on it, um, put in some more permanent footings. Uh, uh, it's going to be a very expensive proposition. Uh, an architect gave us a ballpark of over a hundred thousand to to fix and put in a permanent ramp, um, but we don't have to. There's no need. There's no dictate right now. This will, will certainly give us a couple more years, but we should be planning on that now and not waiting until it becomes an emergency and not having that entrance. Um, staffing I already talked about supplemental budgets, new positions. Our outreach coordinator we're working on. Um, we're working on a uh, seasonal or temporary uh, admin person or persons. If we need to split hours, we can do you know two people at ten hours or one person at twenty. We're looking for volunteers in the office. Um, we have a robust, great group of people that come in, answer the phones, do things. We're always looking for more, and we'd like to kind of make a schedule so that we always have um, coverage. What often happens is if I'm, if I'm out of the building doing a meeting at City Hall, and Nancy's here and has to go downstairs, and Rob is in the middle of, we have to close the office, and so folks are standing there, you know, waiting for service, and we don't have the ability to do service then. Now, that doesn't happen every day, all day, but it does happen, and um, thankfully, we have folks like Elena, Anita, Terry, Kathy, um, Sue, who come in and provide us some support. We're very appreciative of that. 
There's also volunteers needed at the library um, downstairs, so we need some folks to be our permanent librarian. Bob has been doing a super job at reorganizing, restructuring it. We've had a couple people in that every time they come in, we have an improvement. We're very, um, very grateful for them. But it is a constant need, and I'm talking constant, at least you know once a week coming in and reshelving the books that have been returned or reorganizing um, the puzzles that have been you know taken out. So uh, um, you let it go a week, it looks like a tornado is in it. It really. So the good thing about that is our library is being used. It's being used with a, you know, um, kind of great uh, popularity. Uh, the diaper pantry at the VNA on Thursdays, they're looking for a senior to come in and give them a couple hours to help do intake and, and um, distribute product. The city of Gardner has a major election this year, state elections. Uh, last year was, pretty, was a pretty soft, um, low-key one, but this will be a much more significant one. Elections is always looking for it. They're not volunteers. They're paid staff $15 an hour for every, you know, period, increment that you work, you get paid. So that's a paid gig. And Haywood is looking for both paid and unpaid uh, seniors to come work at Haywood. And they, they would be doing things like escorting, um, transporting, um, doing welcoming, serving on, you know, as screeners, things like that. Um, they're always looking for people. All right, activities. In the month of February, we close Bingo, Knitting, and Bridge. On March 1st, Knitting, Bingo, and Bridge are all up and running. Bingo, for the month of March, has jackpot bingos. If somebody's watching this, and I hope they are, they spread the word, that every week we'll be doing, in addition to the normal coveralls, we'll be doing a, an additional $100 coverall in the next four weeks. Those were sponsored by businesses like uh, Watchers at Manor, um, Integrity Medicare Providers, CHC and I don't know. Um, so um, knitting is up and running. Quilted, quilter skilled meetings, by the way, just so you know, we're not an eight to four operation. We have night meetings. Last week we had three three night meetings. Um, so our staff is here till eight or nine until those meetings are over. So if you're wondering why, you know, some people aren't here during the day, they're working, you know, the night shift. We also do Saturday pickups for food. So, um, you know, we're a Monday through Saturday operation with, with kind of long extended hours, which includes our support groups, um, LGBTQ, that meets uh, late at night, our um, Quilters Guild, which meets late at night. So those are just some of the examples. Uh, SNAP. We're doing supplemental nutrition application, uh, assistance program applications. We've been very rigorously supported by House of Peace and Education. They provide a staff person every other week. On the alternate weeks now, DTA themselves are coming in and holding office hours at the Senior Center. So they'll be able to, to help people with SNAP and HIP applications, um, pro providing some additional support for nutrition services. Our congregant meals and grab and goes are in full force. We're doing them three days a week. Our attendance is low. Our census is very low. Um, Pre-COVID, it was going down. It was decreasing, and there was an increase, a, a complementary increase in uh, folks that were going to Meals on Wheels. That trend has continued during COVID and post-COVID. So we're looking to just try to make sure people know that they can come and have a meal with somebody, be engaged, do that social interaction. Food pantry and food pickups are probably in the all time, you know, high. There are less people but more food. So the food pantry, uh, CAC runs that for us, the Senior Food Pantry, and the Beanbag Program. Um, we are so blessed to have great partners, not only in terms of program, but in terms of people. Um, they complement our staff very well, they get along very well, and uh, very like-minded. In fact, the, the director was waiting for our decision on mass before they made a decision on mass, just to kind of show you how well we work together. Special programs, tax aid we talked about is up and running, 75 to 80 people, <coughs> getting a lot of calls for folks that still need tax assistance, but we don't have the ability to, to assist them. Coffee and Conversation is a monthly program by um, Garden Rehab. They just bring in snacks and they do just general how you doing, wellness checks. The Golden Age Group has been meeting in Earnest with I think pretty good numbers, very good numbers at 35 yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Um, as people get more comfortable coming out, so it's always a good uh, program. Last month they had John 
Damalia, the president and CEO of the CHC, and Sue Lowe, who's the director of community outreach. This month, they're having a uh, dentist, the dental director, um, Dr. Uh, Shuknek, who will be coming in talking. And next month, you have? Uh, the dentist, Carver's. Oh, the woodcarvers. Oh, yeah, oh nice. the woodcarvers. Oh, the, aren't they cool? Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, i got to make sure before I give you the right. Yeah, so don't, don't write them. that in your schedule. I'll though. see them tomorrow. Which is the next Golden Age meeting? Uh, at what? Wednesday. 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 Two days from now. Yep. One thirty. Yeah. And we have good donuts. <laughs> yeah, give a shout out to um, to the folks who do your refreshments. Who yeah, are? they're yep. great. Yep, they do they a great do job. Great, for yeah. Bring out. Great donuts at from Christ Jones. No. Uh, oh, yeah, no. No. Market Best. Market Best. Yeah. That's a big draw. And they talk about a lot of things. They have um, the travel folks. We always do a travel update and nice yeah. raffle. It's yeah. a good event. Yeah. Um, so VIPS is coming out. The applications are not out for the volunteer incentive program. That's a tax incentive that's given as a rebate to taxes on seniors that work a certain number of hours for the city. So they are not paid directly, but they're given a credit on their taxes. It's taken directly off um, that. Board. What about Pope Francis visiting? I didn't know about that. You didn't know about Pope Francis? We're going to talk about Pope Francis, um, definitely, just so you know. Um, that was my big announcement, Gloria. That was my big announcement. Um, the Career Center has reached out to us. They want to do a, um, a career fair, job fair for Folks that may be in retirement looking for a second um, or looking for something to do, you know, pick up a couple bucks. We will keep it open to the public, though. It will not just be for the seniors, so we'll open it to the entire community. St. Patrick's Day event um, is full. It filled up in the first week. We're going to have a, a nice dinner provided by Finicky Fork, some desserts. Um, the Irish American Step Dancers, Ann O'Connell's Irish American Step Dancers, coming to to tear up the floor, literally, but that's okay because we won. Um, and then we're going to do an armchair travel to Ireland. So it'll be a, a complete day of Blarney, and we hope that you all uh, come and attend. Uh, we have the Oscars event a week later, so that's the Oscar preview party put on by Gardner Rehab. Um, going to be just kind of a really fabulous thing. My only uh, note here is that there's an Oscar preview party the night before at Westminster, so our attendance may not be... Um, Huge, but but it's always good and it's always different. So um, you mean at Westminster? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this area. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of crossover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kentucky Derby, folks. I would really ask the to board to kind of set this aside. The week of uh, Kentucky Derby, which I think is the week of May seventh, we're going to be doing our own Kentucky Derby here. It will be unique and interesting. I promise you that. Something you've never seen before. So I invite and encourage you to come to Kentucky Derby. We will be betting. There will be bets placed. Um, we will have, um, you know, fascinators and uh, virgin mint juleps, if you can. I'm not sure you can, but we're going to try. So it'll be a good event uh, nonetheless. Uh, we are looking to put on our volunteer luncheon, which we haven't done in a couple years because of COVID. Um, we're looking at a time frame of May or June for that our summer cookout in July. Um, so we're looking for some folks to give us recommendations on, um, on caterers that can do the barbecue. I really want to say and emphasize how grateful we are to the Templeton Fish and Gun Club, who every year have um, really done a remarkable, a remarkable job on the food and the location. Um, I'm hoping that they will be willing to do it again this year. But just in case they're not, our guy, um, Mormon, he's been, you know, he's been the guy. Yeah. He, he, wants to, he wanted to retire two years ago. Um, we forced him, you know, twisted his arm for two years. But he's really, he really wants to retire from that. I think there are guys that can do it, but uh, that's up to them. If not, we're going to find somebody else to do it. Um, talked a little bit about AARP being in flux because of the, um, you know, Pat resigned now. She's the president. So... Um, we're going to be working on that with members of the board. Uh, our COVID clinic on March 2nd we talked about, COVID test kits we talked about, communication, senior moments have been, it's been going really, really well. I always uh, measure its success by how many people have mentioned something to me, like, oh, I saw this program, it was really good, that was an interesting thing. So I get an idea of how many people are watching, I've had a lot of folks um, 
you know, mentioned it to me. So I can see that it's starting to kick off um, more and more every day. Our outreach calls, we've talked about, we've done over 3,000 outreach calls and continuing those um, in a much less aggressive manner, but every week trying to make a couple to folks we haven't seen in a bit. Newsletters, um, put out 1,800 newsletters. Haywood Hospital opened up their doors to us again this past week, so we distribute them in all the offices but one at Haywood, so um, 25 in every, uh, in every office is a lot, but 25 in every office, when you take them together cumulatively, it's a lot of newsletters that gets off the ground. We've had some donations, um, which by the way, there is a requirement that, that donations to city, municipal, government, agency, state as well be document tracked. And we have a requirement to go to the city council and have them accept our donations. So I've talked to the city council um, and to the mayor about, okay, what does that look like? How do you want me to do it? Because we, we really haven't done that in the past. Since we started, uh, Nancy and I started a year ago, Nancy, uh, me a little bit more, Nancy a little bit less, we, we track every donation that comes in, whether it's a wheelchair or it's DVDs, we track it. And so we keep a list, we do itemized or, or estimated um, values so that we can bring that list to the city council there and this is what we got. Just a couple notice, uh, notes though, we got a whole stash of brand new DVDs from Steve Rockwood. I mean, big, big bag, probably 50 DVDs, all still wrapped, um, never used, um, 40, 50. Sue Avalon just brought us in a huge bundle of DVDs. You might be thinking, what do you need DVD for? Put us on demand. Not so with our senior center. Um, during COVID, those DVDs were a godsend. To folks that weren't um, being able to be connected socially and didn't, you know, have you know, broadband and Xfinity and that kind of stuff. Um, Gardner Rehab and Nursing, I told you, gave us $600. Uh, the Nolan Foundation gave us a gift of $875. We got a $25 donation in the memory of um, Leo Richard. So, some, some really nice, generous stuff. A lot of durable medical equipment. So, we ebb, ebb and flow. Um, We'll get a huge demand and everything will go. And then we'll get a surplus coming in. We store it for a couple months and then everything goes. So it's really important. We have a great relationship with St. Vincent de Paul as well to get our folks connected when we don't have their, um, we don't have the stuff to meet their needs. We're working on Comcast pricing, getting you know a small, they're not gonna give us um, you know big stuff, but the city of Boston has a, has a senior citizen discount of like $10. So we're seeing if they'll extend that to Gardner. I mean, 10 bucks is 10 bucks, right? Um, uh, obviously, the health program of Bonnie Tech, Ron and I uh, sent a letter of support to the mayor and the city council for the elimination of dog license fees for mm -hmm. folks 70 and over. That was passed. Um, I we do. They said 75. No, so seven. I think it's 70. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's not a reason to rush out and get a dog, but if you have one, it's a reason to go and make sure that you get it. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they, I, I don't know. It was the garbage that was the best. And I know they're processing it, because D, uh, T, uh, Serfan, the city clerk's got a lot of requests for it. So it's working, um, even to the extent where, you know, one spouse might be 68, they transfer the dog's name into the other spouse who's 70. Which is, you know, that's what it's meant to do, is to help, you know, our senior citizens, so that works. A lot of intensive case management, uh, just a lot of, like, um, would really humble you to know what some of our folks are struggling with and through right now. Um, we, you know, we're doing things we've never done before. Thankfully, we have some support from Central Massachusetts Agency on Aging that gave us a grant. So the vast majority of it, I would say 60% of that has gone to emergency housing funds, helping folks with, um, one of them is a, is a long-term stay. So we've had one month, one probably two and a half months while we're waiting and have filled out housing applications. We're helping them with mass health applications. We're helping them with uh, Medicare, disability, social security applications. We're helping them with transportation applications. So um, that outreach coordinator position is so badly needed right now. Um, it takes a lot of our staff time, which I think in the grand scheme of things is a good use for staff time. So I'm not and, and that just goes into that emergency money. And then last but not least, we're doing some computer licensing, adding some more capabilities to, for our staff for graphic design and email. Just so you know, when I send out those blast emails that many of you are like, don't send me anymore. Nobody, by the way, has sent me in four months. I haven't got a single response saying, please take me off the list. So that's a really nice thing. We send out about 800 emails. 
When the city upgraded the computers, they upgraded the office program. So under old, the old office, I could send out 800 at once and not have a bounce back. But now when I do Yahoo and Hotmail and Gmail, see it as spam, and they won't deliver the Comcast, they won't deliver to anybody with those addresses. So many hundreds of people don't get emails when I send it as one big email. So what do I have to do? I have to break it down into groups of 40, 48, not 50, 48. So now instead of sending one email, I have to send out 16 emails. Um, it's, a, it's a nice workaround, but it's not, it wouldn't be considered best practice. Because eventually, one of these symptom, the systems is going to flag us as spam, and we're not spam, right? But they'll flag us as spam, and then we'll have to go through an act of Congress to get off their list. So getting a, a software like Constant Contact, which will cost us a couple hundred bucks a year, um, not something I'm excited about spending money on, but it, it really increases our capacity. So that's all I have. Wasn't that enough? I think that was good. Can you, can you do the telephone blast? It always pops up on my phone with Celeste's name. Does it? Yes. Wow. It's oh, because you have it programmed in your phone. That's why. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It should come up. Um, I was going to say, it counts on eight. Say, Mike, can you just change the name? <laughs> yeah, you have it programmed in your phone as Celeste. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. I had a, a question about um, you have Bed to Bed Cafe, and I think you have an honor table for Bed. Oh, yeah. You do. And um, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. And um, I recently had an ex uh, someone in extended family circle was going to be um, able to use the honor flight. <coughs> Nice. to get to Washington. Wow. To so I don't know if locally how many veterans are there that have not had that opportunity or an outreach to them to see if that could be something that would be... I know, bet there are a lot. Um, thank you for bringing those two things up. They're, yeah, really, um, nice. they're really important. So we started the Vet to Vet Cafe as a way to start to identify, acknowledge, and to um, embrace folks in our community that have um, you know, given their time, we may sacrifice in the armed services. And we have a pretty good uh, group. We have about 20 people that come, 18 to 20 people that come, and only veterans. So I don't even attend the meetings. I'll go down, I'll say hello, and then I'll get out. Um, the woman who runs it is Allison Chalapatis from Beacon uh, Hospice. Allison is also in the We Honor Veterans program, so she's a coordinator with them, volunteer coordinator which is why she runs and, and facilitates the meetings. And I'm very adamant about that. I mean, even though I've been asked to come down and sit with them, it's not my place. I didn't earn a seat at the table. I don't deserve a seat at the table by virtue of my position as director, and I don't want to um, diminish or minimize uh, the, their service. So I, I don't do it, um, though I'd love to. But they did come to me and they said, hey, we'd like to do this. We'd like to do this fall on the soldier's table. Would you do it? And I said, yeah, you don't, that's, that's a no-brainer, it's a yes. Um, so we bought the physical materials, the table, the chair, stuff like that. Um, uh, Allison brought the items that are on the table, and it's, it's a permanent now um, recognition of folks who have lost their life in the service of their country. So um, initially when we set it up, and this is interesting here, when we first set it up, it was just a table and chair, right, with the stuff on the table. And we thought, well, and where it is, I'm not exactly totally excited about, um, but it's a nice, it's a place of prestige and, and, and uh, people see it, right? So it's obvious. So we said, all right, how do we jazz it up a little? So we went out and got some stanchions and put those uh, honor stanchions around. And it, first of all, it really um, sets aside and specifies this is the area for fallen soldiers. Don't be moving chairs or moving it around. This is a permanent recognition. I am thinking about, we're talking about moving it upstairs um, into a little bit higher visibility um, place. Maybe partly because I, I'm, not, I'm not excited with it being outside the bathroom. That's my thing. And everybody's like, it's perfectly fine, but I'm so uh, obsessive about that. It just doesn't... I don't like it. I don't like it. No. It's like it. It's downstairs. Downstairs. It's in the dining room. Yeah, when you walk in, you'll see the big, yeah, standards. Unless, unless you go down there, you wouldn't you would see it. Downstairs. Right, right. Well, likewise, unless, it, and the folks that go downstairs don't often come up. The knitters, the quilters, the bridge players, 
the pool players, they don't often come upstairs. So um, we'd like to, you know, maybe put it in the lobby. Do we have the plaque on that that yep. Hell explains what yep. it's for? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I saw it last uh, Thursday when I came from the bingo, the first one. Of the, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Yeah. I, I, it yeah. caught my eye. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. something yeah. silver on some nice dishes or something. There was something that caught my eye that was kind of mm -hmm. bright. Uh, oh, this is what it is. We're working at getting a flag um, to have kind of permanently stationed there. There is a flag in the dining room, um, but that's always at the front of the room, right? This et etiquette says that's where it should be. I'm trying to get a second uh, flag down there. Somebody donated this to us. I just want to let you know that. Um, we're going to uh, reflect that donation in the next newsletter. Thank you, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tetzloff, for that. We appreciate it. Um, but it's a little too big for downstairs, so um, we need to get a little short flag. Um, so the the uh, the trip thing, right? The the honor flight, honor flight like would be a great opportunity for us to talk about that at that to that. Um, and there's we have a, a person who does fly fishing with vets, just for, with vets. He's coming in this month just to create um, you know, more awareness. But there are a lot of things. I have Lynette Gabrella. Lynette is the veteran service agent for the city of Gardner. Um, she was my guest last month on Senior Moments, and a lot of people got that. But we never, and she was concerned about whether or not we could talk for 45 minutes. I remind everyone I can't say my name in less than 30 minutes. So um, we had a robust conversation. We didn't talk about housing. We didn't talk about medical. We didn't talk about Armed Forces Recreational um, Centers or Shades of Green, which are all unique and interesting um, benefits to vets that 99% of them don't know exist. So it's a great opportunity for us. Maybe we'll do a veterans page in the newsletter. Maybe actually do the Golden Age with her. Lynette is awesome. Yeah, that's a great idea. Lynette Gabrilla. And those of you who don't know because you don't play bingo, um, up until December of this past year, so except for the last three months, still we through January, we have guest callers at Bingo. And then we have a guest come in and call the food and bread raffle. So there's always somebody new when we try to get um, you know, municipal department heads or uh, local nonprofit organizations, the hospital, community health center, that kind of stuff there. So some pretty neat stuff, just you know, trying to get more resources, getting people connected. Um, because ninety percent of the resolution of a problem is known who to talk to. So. Because you know, I, I go by the uh, old horse farm on the way to Winchester. I'm wondering what that's all about. That's vets. That's gamma. Yeah. Um, oh, it gamma. Is, that's gamma. It is a mental health yeah. uh, treatment yeah. program. Yeah. yeah, they have a farm. They started in the Athol, and this that. is an extension of that. So it's a really cool. Yeah. Actually, we'd love to have Sean. Michelle or the CEO Tracy come in and talk about it. Yeah, you got yeah. some idea. That yeah. Be yeah. Come, I, yeah. I think it'd be Yes. Yes. That's a nice Is that always the Golden Age meeting up here? Yeah, right. Yeah. We try to have a guest, you know. That's the hardest part of my job. It's <laughs> finding someone every month. Well, you do a great job. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's been great meetings for sure. I have one more thing that a, a member of the senior center approached me about was the parking lot. So I don't know who's in charge of maintenance of the parking lot, but there's a couple of large cracks out there. And someone mentioned that um, they thought it might be a good idea to have some filler or sealer put in to some of those spots. I know somebody was uh, concerned about turning an angle because the, some of the cracks are a little bit wider. So I don't know if that's a city-wide they take care of that as a municipal parking lot? Or? Yeah, so let me answer that directly, if it's okay with you. Yeah. Right. Um, the, there are some issues with the parking lot. Um, in addition to cracks, which the DPW has absolutely, we already talked to them, committed to coming in and filling those, but they have to wait till the warmer weather. So um, we'll probably see that happen within the next, say, four weeks. I, I feel pretty confident that's going to happen within the next four weeks. Um, it's not a heavy lift for them. But the issue of the parking lot as a board is something we really do have to consider. So we really, even though we were on a limited basis, now think about that, we're not, we're open fully, but we don't have full participation. We've been, three days a week, that parking lot is full to the max. Mm -hmm. And people are parking on the street, they're parking up, up the street. Um, and as a result, it causes some folks to, to decide not to come here. Say, oh, so I'm parking, I'm going home. Get it, it's going to be too much of a hassle. Parking is and will continue to be a huge 
um, barrier and challenge to us having people participating here at the center. Yeah. Um, this is a great building. It's got great bones. There's no doubt about it. But I think it's worth exploring um, you know, what other possibilities might be there and what do they look like, especially if we can increase parking, decrease the likelihood that somebody has to use stairs. In a year that I've been here, we've had six major uh, medical issues. All six are on the stairs. So it's a huge liability for us. Um, it's a huge liability for our seniors. So eliminating and removing access to the stairs and increasing our capacity. And we have two rooms. We are constantly being asked to do more programs that we can't do simply because we don't have space. So, um, you know, I know there's been some, you know, we've been asked, you know, do you need more space? What do you need? How can we do it? I've asked whether or not the city might have money to buy a building and tear it down. Um, with, with so many buildings already being on the uh, demolition list, that's not likely ever going to happen for us. Um, might somebody bequest some land to us like in the back? Maybe someday. I don't know who they are. I haven't had any contacts with them. But um, the long-term proposition isn't good. So we, we do need to do something about parking. Ron has said he's going to reach into his trust fund and buy a, a build a parking garage for us, but I don't know how long that's going to take. A nice deck with, sun, uh, with a uh, solar panel. Solar, we have the Dometka parking platform, we'll call it. Um, yeah, that's not going to happen. So, um, Didn't the mayor mention the water for the streets? You know, I think somebody did. Uh, it hasn't been mentioned to us. Uh, but, I, you know, I would be really, I would be open to that. I'd be really excited about that because it's all on one floor. One floor. It's all on one floor. It's There's a lot. a lot of space, tons of parking, a field. Like, what's that? Cool? But that hasn't been offered to us. Um, I know that they're looking at a lot of different options for that. Um, I don't know if, if we're on the list. I, I would love it. to. I heard it from somebody. I thought it was the mayor. I've heard it too. Yeah. I've heard yeah. it too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of the meetings, yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, part of it is they want to be very deliberate, go through a process, see whether or not it's a good purpose, it's a good fit. They've done a lot of work on that building. Um, it used to have some water issues, so they put a lot of money into addressing the water issues. They're gone. Um, but, you know, I think it would be, I think be kind of cool as an option, but I don't know. I don't know. I already have an idea. If we never did get the building, we could on the field. They could cut off a part of the property, you know, of the field. We could have a... Community garden for our senior citizens. Community oh, garden. Stuff like that would be perfect. Yeah. 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 We could do our picnic. Our oh, even have a greenhouse. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 I know that in uh, Marlboro they have a greenhouse where, where theirs is. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That, that would be nice. Yeah. But, uh, that field awesome. is always underwater, though, a lot yeah. of the time. The field to the right of the school there. Yeah. I laugh about that because I've been going down 117 a lot lately. And if you go past Bolton Orchard oh, heading yes. towards, there's the two big field, right, mm -hmm. of community gardens. Yes. And from fall to spring, it's like 12 feet of water. It looks like a little marsh. Right. But they always have a million people planting there. So I, I say, how do they do that? But they do it. They make it's it's always right. <laughs> yeah, they could be doing cranberries. It's a cranberry bog. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we could do raised gardens. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm way, way ahead of, of this. But I think it's a great thing to bring up because once we're asked if we want to explore, we'll probably have to do a lot of, a lot of work and see whether or not it would be right for There's us. There's a stage, too. Is there a stage? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. Only thing I remember about, what, oh, there is, in like yeah. the cafetorium. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there is. And there's a gym. The gym is what I remember. Yeah. yeah. I taught there. there. You did? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I, I, never, I didn't ever think, the teachers complain a lot about, the time, about not being healthy because of the mold and the water. Yeah, because it's very wet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but they've done a lot of remediation. Yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. I mean, Elm Street's open, Sodom's open. Like, there are a lot of buildings yeah. that are open um, for discussion. The biggest thing is the trade off on the bones here. The bones are good. Yeah. We've kind of gotten and you've done so much. So much nice work. It looks. I mean, Rob. Rob is a fantastic yeah. maintenance person. Yeah. Steve yeah. was too. Um, yeah, it looks good. It's so that's okay. We, we could do that. Would be our ten-year plan. It's a little bit of renovation. Give us something to do. I just figured out that the building that we have now is 
I was going to, I'm sorry, I put it right here, Pope. You just figured it out. Oh, finally, you just figured it out. Yes. So, so for those of you, when I, I used to do a newsletter for the chamber, and every newsletter I put something off the wall. Um, so for our summer outing, I said um, tens of thousands of people attended the summer outing this year to see who, would, who was reading and who was picking up and say something. We've got a, we've got a couple comments about the Pope Francis on yeah. April Fool's Day oh, for folks. Yeah. So don't come out for your blessing for a Pope Francis. I thought maybe the show's coming. Give us a show on Francis. Oh, Francis. Francis. Pope Francis. <laughs> space a little bit better so as a board um, you know you should know that that we come in early we we open at 7 30. usually it's from 7 15 on from 7 15 to about 8 every morning all we do is maintenance cleaning reorganizing that's almost almost on a daily basis every day so just trying to make the place look a little bit better um you know because we're the ones that by 3 o'clock in the afternoon make it look like hack. So we have to clean up everything we did the day before. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, we have any other open discussion? Anything you want to bring up? You might have already done enough. <laughs> if not, just let you know our date of our next meeting will be on Monday, April the 4th at 2 p.m. So, we will see you then. We adjourn. Good meeting, lots of info. Thank you.